Oh, no, before we talk about Liverpool, can I just get your thoughts on Eric Ten Hag, obviously leaving his position as Manchester United manager and Ruud van Nistelrooy taking interim charge? Yeah, you can, of course. Uh, he's a Dutch manager, so that makes it uh, even harder for me, for us, uh, as Dutch people. Um, always your first four thoughts are with the person. Uh, we, are, we are all in this job, so we know that it can happen, but if it happens... It, um, especially because I know him a little bit and I know how much work he puts into it. And um, then to get this news for him is, uh, of course, uh, uh, a pity. And um, But we also know, especially us coming from Holland, how well he did at Ajax and that he won two trophies over here. So we will see him, uh, I think, in the near future somewhere at a big club again. But at this moment, it's uh, for him and his family. It's, of course... Uh, yeah, tragedy is maybe a bit too much to say, but it's a big disappointment. For your squad at the moment, Jota, Chiesa, Connor Bradley, are they likely to figure? How far away are they from, from a return? Um, the ones you just mentioned. Uh, Connor is uh, training with us again, so uh, he could maybe um, be in the squad tomorrow. Uh, Jota not, Alisson not, uh, Harvey Elliott not. And Federico, I'm not expecting him to be in the squad tomorrow as well. How long do you think for Federico? Uh, yeah, that's always difficult to say because he goes a bit up and down. So sometimes he's there with us, train a few days, and then uh, uh, he, he goes out. He, he goes out for an injury again. So um, I don't want to uh, put uh, days or weeks on it because uh, I think we just have to make sure he gets uh, in the best possible shape and uh, don't put any pressure on him by coming up with dates. Just looking at this competition, the game you've already played, obviously the starting lineup from the win over Bournemouth, only Kelleher and Nunes then started the cup win over West Ham. And then from West Ham game, only then Jota started the league win over Wolves. So how likely are you to do something kind of similar with regards to team selection this week, bearing in mind it's also a double header against Brighton? Yeah, I don't think it's possible to do the same as we did against the West Ham for the simple reason that we got some injuries. So we don't have... Uh... Uh, maybe enough players to change them all, if I wanted that. Um, we've played on Sunday against Arsenal yesterday. There was mostly recovery for everyone. So today when we come in and we and they have to come in uh, as we speak, we will find out how they all are and then we have to make a decision who's going to start. But um, I think if you look at our schedule and the amount of times that we have less days to recover compared to our opponent, that's... Um, that's not on Saturday because we play Brighton uh, tomorrow. But Brighton played Saturday, and 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 with um, with Liverpool, it's the same. They play Friday, we play Saturday. So it might be a moment for us to also see some other players. But let, like I said, we have to. Um, I first have to know how fit everybody is. Hiya. Um, can I just ask as well, this starts, I think it's five games in around 11 days. How do you prepare for that? And, and does that mean you have to sort of select games that have more prominence? Uh, no, I think always the next game is the most important. Uh, so uh, you try to bring, uh, to, to pick a team, to select a team that is best capable of winning that game. And sometimes that means because they've played so many games, you change one or two or a few more players. How to prepare them for that is not that's not what you do today or tomorrow. That's mostly what you've done already in preseason and all the weeks leading up to this schedule. Those are the weeks you try to prepare them for these weeks, and you do this by training sessions, of course. Endo came off the bench, and I know he started the previous round in this competition. Is this a chance for him to maybe start? And also, when you're making these changes, how do you keep those? players that are maybe struggling for minutes happy in the squad? That last thing is not always easy because they all want to play and it would be strange for me if they are all happy if they don't play but they are professionals, they know that these things can happen and they also see that the players that play in their position do really well so that is mostly with uh, Vata but it's also with Joe Gomez and Gerard Kwanza that are in competition with Ryan, with, uh, with Ibu and with Virgil. So they understand and they see how well these players play and that they also stay fit till the last minute of the game. Um, but I think Wata is one of the players that, that might uh, be in the lineup because um, for it, because the season is going to be so long and, he, and we will need him during the season. And therefore, he needs once in a while playing time as well. Um, he fortunately has this playing time uh, with the national team. 
but it helps if he once in a while gets a game with us again. And I really liked him against uh, West Ham. And what I admire about him or uh, what I respect about him is his personality because he, two times he had to come in five minutes before the end. And in my managerial career, I sometimes have seen that players, if they come in five minutes before the end, they come in with a face like this and play like that. But uh, every time when we need him, even if it's for five minutes, he shows up for the team, for his teammates and for himself. So um, I think he um, also, for that reason, he deserves to play uh, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Oh. Hi, Arne. Uh, you mentioned after the Arsenal match your admiration for Darwin Nunes and his ability to come in and play three games after not having played a lot and to play with such energy and aggression. You also kind of mentioned he was the only recognised striker available. So with that in mind, I was wondering about some of the other options. Uh, we saw Cody Gakpo play 15 minutes at the end of the game against Leipzig, but he seemed to have been a little bit more rejuvenated in his old left wing role. We've also seen Luis Diaz and Mo Salah play centrally during their Liverpool career. I noticed Jane Dans was walking into the building earlier today. I wonder whether or not he's come in to play if he's trained with the first team this year. You could become the manager over here. <laughs> uh, or do, do we have any other option to play as a nine as well? Because you're giving me a lot already. But I mean, I'm not offering my own services, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if that's smart. Um, <clears throat> Uh, no, I think about Darwin, I think uh, I, I gave him credit for the fact that he worked so hard in previous weeks where he didn't play a lot to be able to play three times in a, in, in a row uh, in, I think, three, three games in eight days. So that says a lot about him. But it also says a lot about the quality of our performance staff and medical staff uh, that we were able to, um, to give him the right sessions to prepare him in the right way. But you always need the player to buy in because you can give him the right sessions, but if he doesn't give everything then it's very difficult for him to do what he did so um also with him it was for it was a good thing that his ban for the uruguay team uh, uh, uh was cancelled so he could play their two games that helped probably as well for him to play the way he did and i'm not talking about the quality he played with but with the intensity he played with and the quality was also good so there was a positive thing. Yeah, it is a pity that um, the Joker Jota is not available and Federico Chiesa is also not available because they were, in my opinion, the most logical number nines. Maybe not in yours, but uh, <laughs> uh, but still we have some other options with the ones you just said. Do you expect Jota to be back before the November international break? No. After that? No. Yeah. Um, and Elliot the same? Elliot the same, yeah. And just, just on Chiesa, there were some reports of Italy at the end of last week saying that they, they might try and get him on loan in January. Is that ever, I mean, it seems fairly knee-jerk knee to... That hasn't gone through my mind at all. Uh, I think the first and foremost is that he gets fit again and then we can see uh, where he is. And I think there were also reports in, 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 in Italy what I meant about him was that he missed preseason and in preseason that he was on low intensity sessions because he had to train with three or four players apart from the group. Uh, so um, that is uh, what I said. And then going from there to, the, to a high intensity league, to a high intensity playing style uh, is difficult in general for every player, but especially if, I, if you had a preseason like this. So we knew this before, so we knew we had to be really careful and adjust where we could uh, to, hit, to his individual needs. But it hasn't been perfect yet, so we're trying to find the right way of building him up uh, without overloading him. And that is, has been difficult till now, but well, I have the full confidence that that will happen. And um, let's let him first uh, be fit. Just the goalkeeping situation, Arne, do you look at the deal to keep Callahan in this competition or do you give Giles a chance? <clears throat> it's something that also goes through my head and I haven't made a decision yet, so we will see tomorrow. Um, it's also a decision you take, also uh, you include your goalkeeper coach with that, but in the end I have to make that decision and I um, I also want to hear how fit Zekweef is at the, at the moment. Uh, he played many games, so um, let's wait and see what decision I make uh, tomorrow. At the weekend, Mount Ashville made two unbelievable saves. I don't know if you've seen any. He was there at the Ballon d'Or last night. How have the club been tracking his progress before he joins next summer? 
I assume the club follows his uh, pro uh, progress uh, uh, very detailed because I know how professional this club is. If you ask me, I'm in a program from game, press conference, pre press conference, sometime have some time to train with the boys as well. Uh, <laughs> so I, I wasn't able to see his game uh, during the weekend, but it's good to hear that he made some good saves. But I'm not surprised to hear that because uh, we knew uh, that we bought a very good uh, goalkeeper with him. I was just going to ask what you thought the, the main threats from Brighton will be tomorrow. Um, very good idea about football for many years already. So uh, the, I like their playing style uh, a lot. We have their former manager already and, 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 and with this one as well. And I think um, what makes the club Brighton, in my opinion, special is that um, maybe not the most money in the league when they buy the players, but they always find the right ones. <laughs> so there's a lot of quality. Uh, although, uh, also for them, the transfer fees go up a bit, but they are not spending 100 million on a player. So they always find the right ones. And uh, so many quality players uh, to pick and a very good playing style. Um, just on, on obviously the Cups, uh, a chance to use young players sometimes. Um, you obviously used a lot of, a lot of them to go out on loan in the summer to, to maybe get game time. But when you do get injuries and you're looking at the squad, is that the difficult balance to try and know how many to let go and how many to sort of keep around the building? Yeah, yeah, that is sometimes difficult because uh, in certain situations you would prefer to keep them here because then they can train every day with you and you can you can implement in the best possible way your playing style. But if that also means that they hardly play, that will normally also lead not to the progression you are hoping for. So that is the balance we always try to find with our players, also with our very talented ones. Then, and then sometimes that means you, you bring them on alone. Stefan Bicetic was a very good example to that. And uh, then you hope to see that he plays a lot and then you already played a few games. Um, and then it's very pleasing in this particular situation that he went to a very good manager as well with Pepijn Leinders that, uh, that knows this club also. So. And uh, for Ben Doak, it's similar. Also went to a very good manager and if to a very good playing style. So it's a balance we need to find. Do we want to play them on a regular basis or once in a while and keep with us? And we have to keep. Uh, we have to be aware of our own interests so we can let everybody go that doesn't play all the time. And there, Tyler Morton is a good example of that, which is a quality, quality player. Uh, good enough to play everywhere uh, around the league, but is in competition with so many good midfielders over here. But yeah, like you see now, with our, we've got six forwards, two of them are injured, so only four left. And with the schedule we have, that's sometimes a bit of a worry for me. So maybe we should bring Bendo back. <laughs>